Oh boy, here we go again. Time for a real Nintendo review. How long before we have to play the Content ID game? Well, hopefully not at all, because during this video, while it should all look okay and fine and dandy for you, I have changed the coding thing when the video is rendering. I was just doing what my friend said. Which should hopefully fool the crappy YouTube robot that does not understand that even if it's Nintendo content under section 107 of blah 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 blah, it is for review and critical analysis which you're not allowed to stop Nintendo. Anyway, we are getting off topic. So, Splatoon! Nintendo's take on shooters. Shooters. Oh god, no. No, not Spun Gargle. Wee wee, two weapon slots regenerating health and nothing but dirt grey and gunmetal brown. Ah, oh, what are you doing, Nintendo? Actually, no. Oh. Nintendo has decided to shirk off all realistic shooters, both new and old. Oh yes, there are no medkits of old or regenerating health of new to be found here. No 15 weapon slots of old or two new weapons to be found either. No, Nintendo, when it came to the test, decided to lean over Valve's desk for the answers, and has taken a more Team Fortress 2 approach. So, as you can see here, the art style is very much like that of TF2. I know it's very similar to Jet Set Radio, but we need to compare this to Team Fortress 2, as that's who they were copying, even though Jet Set Radio does look good, and this kind of reminds me of Jet Set Radio, but back on topic. So yes, as you can see, it has a very Team Fortress 2 vibe, with nice, vibrant environments, some colourful, cartoony characters, which is nice and refreshing after seeing Swamp Gargle Wee Wee paint everything gun metal grey. And again, much like Team Fortress 2, all of our contestants only have one weapon each. There are a few sub-weapons, but that's for later. And again, like Team Fortress 2, death is only a temporary setback and you will respawn at your home base. Even improving on the one aspect of Team Fortress 2 which wasn't too good, why respawn at your base and run all the way through your base to get back to the battle, when with a simple touch of the gamepad, you can be launched back right into the action. A touch on the extra sketch mind, nothing nice like a simple button press. I've heard a lot of people say that this idea is very good and innovative and new, like the way you use the water guns rather than an actual gun, which is very true if you were born after 1993 and never played Nerf Super Soak game Beach Bot Invasion, which is the same premise of shoot the bads with the water guns, yo. But I digress, because while we are still on the subject of Team Fortress 2, let's wrap up this visual section with the one thing that people kinda hate in Team Fortress 2, but it's kinda okay here which is the customizable outfits. So remember in TF2 when they brought in custom hats and it was like kind of irritating but fine? So it looked like a jelly bean on a fancy cake, just a bit out of place. Then Brink saw this and was like, we won't be outdone by you, you won't even see the cake for the jelly beans. Having fully customizable outfits for everyone so you could not tell who was on your team and who was to be shot. Well, Nintendo got their wedding cake and their decorations and thought about this because Team Fortress 2 has something, so we must have something like it as well. So what if we were to have fully customizable outfits and skin tones as well, like eyes and all that good stuff, like Brink, rather than showering the cake with jelly beans, we arrange them in a nice fancy pattern so it looks like it's part of the cake. Now, if you got lost in that cake analogy, and allow me to educate you, Splatoon has fully customizable guys in both costumes and body varieties, which can be considered bad, but then they were like, okay, so your massive hair that is like 20 or 30% of your body, what if in the hub and all of the little areas around it, you can have it whatever color you desire, but in the online games, it glows a bright neon yellow or a bright neon color, so that you know which people are on your team and which one is the one to be shot, which is a great compromise. And in a way, it does outdo Team Fortress 2 because I like the idea of customization. I know I'm going to get stick for this, but I like the idea of customization. Like, you can have whatever outfit you want, you can have whatever skin color you want. I really like the idea of customization, but games like Brink you make it like that is a bad idea but Nintendo got it right because you can have your awesome outfit but then when you're in battle you just have this bright colored area of your body that says these are on your team they're on the enemy's team and then when you're out of battle it's back to being you so it's a nice compromise and this is like the correct way to do a team customization thing like because obviously in a single-player game customize the hell out of yourself but when you've got to tell who's on your team 
think Splatoon has done it the best way it could be done. So to wrap up the visual style section of this review, the visuals and the graphics are very nice and colourful, Jet Set Radio, oh it looks really good, the customization done really well, and just generally overall it looks very nice. So with that said, let's move into the other half of the review, which is the game, because you can't just have something look nice, it has to play well, so let's move on into the gameplay part of the review. So, for the gameplay side of things, it consists of two sections. The first is the mission section, where you run around a set path, killing bad guys to earn money and special tokens to buy new outfits, weapons and upgrades. And, as you may notice, I am using the test fire demo mission here as, oh boy, we will get into that in a moment, as it is correlated to one of the biggest flaws that was in the test fire and still partly exists in the final version. And the other section, of course, is the Team Fortress 2 or any online shooter section of the game, which is the multiplayer section, where you and the three other teammates must cover the map in as much of your ink as possible before the time limit runs out. And I'm not sure why, but when I'm spraying this ink around, it looks rather jelly. I don't know why, but when I'm playing as the blue or the orange team, I feel like I'm spraying Aperture Propulsion Gel or Aperture Repulsion Gel around. I imagine just like one of the opposite team is just going to jump on the blue gel and just go launching into the sky. And, for both, they're fun! You hear that EA and Activision? Fun. That thing we used to have with shooters, before you made them realistic. Yes, despite how frantic things can get, something relaxing and entertaining about spraying the map in Aperture Gel. It makes me feel like I'm playing Mario Sunshine again, but I'm Baby Bowser, covering the island in crap rather than cleaning it up, which I still found fun. And people think I'm strange for this, but I don't care, I like it, I like spraying the water to clean the things because Sunshine's a good game. Moving on, I would say that the way you shoot is kind of balls, because while you move around with the left stick and rotate with the right stick, you have to aim with the motion controls, which you can see here. And it's complete and total garbage. What's that? You can turn the motion controls off. Okay, I don't care. Spyro, surely it was meant to be played with the motion. No, face shut now! It's bad enough that I have to play with this giant slab as the GameCube controller is not compatible. What is up with that, Nintendo? You make the best, most comfortable controller you've ever made, compatible with Smash and nothing else? Why? So yes, once you turn off that godforsaken gimmick, the controls are nice and tight. Your guy moves where you want him to move. And he turns on a dime. So every time I was engaged in a shoot-off with someone else on the opposing team, and I was outmaneuvered, each death felt as if it was my fault, not the controller. Guy moved better than me, and so I died. The only death I found was kind of cheap was when I was setting up for the recording in the first match. And while I was setting up the recording, someone shot at my feet, and it might have been that I was on the edge, but I fell through the floor. But again, I digress. The controls are beautiful. Your character turns on a dime and he moves where you want you to move. So, like many games like Rayman Legends, when you stop, you stop, and when you die, feel as if it was your fault. How good the graphics are, and how well it plays, and how fun the game is overall, Nintendo can't be trusted to not screw something up in one of three ways. In fact, this is why I was using the test fire footage earlier. Will these three problems still persist into the final game? Let's find out. Okay Nintendo, let's talk about demos. They are a risk. If you make a shit demo, that's everybody spreading it word of mouth to not buy it and your sales will drop. However, if it's a good demo, sales will go up on the final version. Let's talk about your demo. Did it make me get the full game? Yes, but that yes comes with a big butt, almost as big as Tears butt, and that's a big butt. Why? Three reasons. I understand that if it's a tech demo, it is not even in beta yet, you're just showing off the tech that will be in the final version. Test fire was last week, one week before the game goes live. That means that what you are taking is from the final product. This means that all features better be there and ready to use in the review, because if something changes in one week before launch, critics like me 
are going to bring it up. So let's talk about the three features that you kind of skimmed over that are the deciding factors of whether someone would buy this game or not. The first one is just something that's a minor nitpick, but I feel like it still must be addressed. So, Splatoon, like all its counterparts, be it TF2, Counter-Strike, or Call of Duty Black Balls 3, was going to have full call integration, so you could listen to what everyone in your current match is saying to help you and your teammates make victory easier. This was dropped because the Splatoon's creator played an online Call of Duty match and heard all the bad stuff. Okay, first, out of all the online voice chat games you could pick, you pick the one that has the most shithead teenagers in it that will call anyone and anything a gay fag if they so much as mention something like they hate the mans going pew pew pew. Secondly, the Wii U is not exactly a hardcore system. Again, most of the smack tars think it's for gay fags, so you don't have to worry about everyone in Splatoon being racist or obscene. And if you are really, really that scared of people being racist or obscene in the Splatoon voice chats, then make your voice chat modifier thing abusable. Say, we want you to abuse it. Now, I'm not being racist here, this is just for the example. So if, for example, you knew that someone was going to be racist and they were going to call somebody a fucking nigger, replace the bad words with Mario and Yoshi and Bowser sounds, for example. So it's like, oh, you're a Yahoo! That seems kind of funny, actually. That'd make the bad words actually kind of funny and then people would be abusing it and nobody would get hurt because you wouldn't hear the bad words. You'd just hear Mario and Yoshi sounds. I myself have Skype. I don't need to worry. I can just call my friends on Skype and talk to them privately. But some people can't afford both a console and a PC. So if they can't afford both systems, they don't have the luxury of going on Skype. So it seems like it was a feature that didn't need to be removed because you're not exactly going to get an in, in fluctuation of assholes from Call of Duty. Anyway, it was just a minor nitpick. Let's move on to the two bigger ones that could really damage your game. And one of them was pretty disgusting last week. So the first of the two big ones is the connection and the connection issues. And this is where that lovely test fire footage comes in. So let's have a brief rundown of Nintendo's test fire history. On test fire one, it lasted three hours. And I was on with Aqua. Connection was okay. It wasn't great, but it was there. And, you know, it's the first time round, nothing special was happening, and Nintendo might not have anticipated how many people they were going to get in, so it gave them time to get their servers ready. Second round that was last week was pathetic. First off, the whole hour it was up, the servers were not even working. They did acknowledge the fuck up and give everybody an extra hour, no apology though, but that's besides the point. The point is, you knew from Test Fire 1 how popular it was, so you knew that you would have to have some damn good servers, whether they be bigger, better, faster, whatever, you knew you were going to have more people logging into Test Fire 2 to try this out because now a lot of people have said it's good and you should check it out, and you knew that how many people from number one were going to be playing anyway. You were, you were prepared, you had that preemptive knowledge that you would need to make these servers bigger and better, and yet you still screwed it up. So, does our final version fix this horrible connection problem? Yes it does! They acknowledged it and they fixed it! Connection is now nice and smooth, so congratulations Nintendo, I am really happy that you have fixed it. There was one or two times where it seemed to take a little bit longer to connect, which I found kind of suspicious, so I did check on Facebook, I asked Aquariana a wrong button mash on the phone, I asked a couple of people on Skype, I was like, is the connection constant for you, or does it drop out occasionally? And they're like, no, it's pretty constant, so I am impressed, Nintendo. That is now not a point down, but I give you a point for recognising that you need bigger servers and you have fixed them and made your connection really good. Drops out occasionally, but it's still really good. 
So, congratulations on fish fixing big issue number one. So let's move on to big issue number two, and then we will go to the final verdict. Lastly, the other big issue, and my biggest complaint I have, is grouping. Now, the test fire is a pre-release demo, which means that it should have all of the features to test out. And when going online, it has one big flaw. One big stupid flaw that says, just go on to any other shooter. That is, when you go online, you can't pick who you play with. So, say you're in a Skype call with three friends, like I was, and you want all three of you on the same team to play together. Then, so sad, too bad, you're getting thrown into a random party. And even if you manage to get the stars to align and you get a friend in your room. There's no saying you will be on the same team, which is bullshit. So it's like the connectivity. It is a really big issue when you just want to play with friends and you just got to play with a bunch of strangers that you don't care about. So, was this really stupid idea fixed for the final release? No, it fucking hasn't. Because, yes, you can join a friends game like there is now an option that says join friends game and you can join in good that's fine I'm happy with that but you can't pick what team you're on Nintendo that is stupid if I want to play with Midnight and Photon I expect to be able to play with them as in oh look all three of us are in a room so there's me and Crimson and Photon then all of us can play on the same team and have a good time but no it's ran it's still it is still randomly assigned so I get on a team with three assholes that I don't care about and those two get to play together well I'm not having fun they might be having fun but I'm not having fun because I get my ass kicked by them I'm getting shot by them I want to be on the same team and play with them but when we're playing against each other it's not fun I mean it could be if like that's what we wanted to do and we like opted in to a, a random assign thing like if it just said do you want to be on random teams yes or no you could opt into that but because there is no proper grouping option it frustrates me because I I added them they've joined my match to play with me not against me so I've got to just knock all your points off for that stupid floor because it's something so simple and Team Fortress 2 has it Call of Duty has it Every barking shooter has it, but you, it's stupid, and I, 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 I'm raging because of just that one stupid mistake that shouldn't even be there. But anyway, let's move on to the final verdict. For the final verdict of this game, Splatoon gets... A 4 out of 5. I still slightly prefer Team Fortress 2, but the game sounds great, plays great, looks great, and is a nice refreshing take on shooters after Spunk Gargle Wee Wee decided to make everything dirt brown, gunmetal, grey, gritty realism. And as for the three complaints I've had, yes, there is still no voice chat, but I can just use Skype. It's just a point I wanted to bring up, and it's something this shouldn't have been removed really as for the two other things the connection problems and the grouping well they were fixed which is great news so on the whole Splatoon is a nice fun refreshing take on the genre and I would recommend it to you if you're wanting to see something different in the shooting genre that is of course if you don't live in the UK as it's a bit harder to get over here I was just lucky to get one now I'm off to sell the rest of those platoon copies I got from that truck.